to feel you touch my skin Don't keep me waiting, just begin I take a step to try to entice I'm getting close to you, warming eyes My private thoughts are written up Don't make me ask you twice Closer I've been waiting for so long So good it can't be wrong Don't be a flirt, act on it now My fever will break somehow You need to pull me to your chest But hold me back as I undress Press your lips softly against mine Baby, give it one more try Explore me through as you confess You put me in unconsciousness I've been waiting for so long Pull me closer It feels so good it can't be wrong Come closer I've been waiting for so long Pull me closer Welcome to Raw. I'm your host, Lena, for this evening, and we just heard Closer by Melissa Otero, who's here with me. Melissa Otero. Otero, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Lena. That was a beautiful song. Thank you. Closer. <laughs> and you wrote that song, right? I did. Okay, so who were you in love with when you wrote that song? Because it sounds very intimate, very emotional. Um, well, I wasn't necessarily in love, but it, it's, I didn't write the song by myself. It was co-written with my producer at the time. And I felt like I had too many really deep love songs in the album. So we wanted to try something different, something fun. And there was someone in my mind at the time that you know I kind of liked. So I drew from that. And that's how the song came about. So this one was more of a collaboration? It was a collaboration, song. yeah. There's, uh, most of the songs, it was just written by me. But that one in particular, it was me and my producer. Okay, that, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Wasn't your producer though, was it? <laughs> I played the fifth. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> so let's talk more about like your writing style in general. Mm -hmm. Now the other songs that they're going to hear, you wrote mm -hmm. solo. I believe so, yes. Okay, yeah. and how would you describe your sound and what it is that you truly write? Well, I, I do love mainstream music. I love adult, contemporary, pop rock. So my music is a combination of pop rock and adult contemporary. Um, I draw songs from- What was your like, favorite artist? Growing up? That, yeah. <laughs> well, my first artist that inspired me to be a singer was Gloria Stefan. And a few years later, I discovered Celine Dion. So I guess my music is a combination of both those artists. They're both my idols. I've, I've gone to Celine Dion's concert about 10 years ago and loved it. And I met Gloria Stefan about 10 years ago. <laughs> so uh, it, and it was an experience and I'm proud to still have these two women as my idols as an adult. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're gonna hear more. And the next song is Worth It All.
flying stairs in my room thinking about what to do Cause I am bored well, Maybe if I moved away things would be different what can I say life bores me if habits don't break That's a very confident song. It is. I wrote that one day because um, the person I was dating at the time, he was a workaholic, I'm a workaholic, but my line of work is traveling, and I love to travel. And I just felt like I was always home for a long period of time, and I was really bored. And I wrote this song kind of out of frustration, um, saying, you know what, I think that it, Maybe if we just picked up our bags and go on a spontaneous trip, it would be fun. And we actually, he didn't know I wrote that song, and a week later we ended up driving from San Francisco to, to Vegas. So really? it, 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 That's yeah. a trip. <laughs> yeah, and it was an That's awesome trip. trip. And was it worth it? It, it was, was worth so it worth it. <laughs> yeah. I think that was the time I visited the Grand Canyon, and I was just, wow. Now, <laughs> let me ask you about the instruments that you play. Mm. Now, are you you're playing on some of the... the Yes, song? Uh, some of the songs I play piano. Mm -hmm. Piano. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're using to write, is the piano? Yes. I recently, about a year ago, I picked up the guitar and I started learning. So I haven't debuted myself live yet with the guitar, but... Um, How is that? Because you have to build up calluses. That's not really an e easy instrument to just say, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start playing. Yeah, it's 
I have my challenges, and sometimes I'm like, ah, I just want to throw the guitar and forget about it. But you want to be like a rock star and slam it down well, and say, yeah. well, my guitar is really pretty. It's pink and glittery, and I really wanted to learn how to play like Joan Jett. So uh -huh. she inspired me to pick up the guitar. I said, wait a minute. I, I started listening more and more to her music, which is kind of funny because I, I knew some of her songs, but not a whole lot of it. And about a year ago, I was like, wait a minute. I, I really, really dig what she's doing, and I want to play, and she's so... Can well, I bad reputation bad. was, was uh, <laughs> like revolutionary yeah. for women when that song came out. Exactly, yeah. I mean, and she was in The Runaways, and I saw the movie about that, too. And she's been doing this her whole life, and I just love her attitude. Mm. And she's, she's rock and roll, but she's a positive rock and roll. So, so what song would, would you say, you know, the, her influence, you know, is, is most um, profound? Well, in my album, the album was already completed by the time I started discovering more of Joan Jett. But music that I'm writing now definitely has some influences. Because oh. now I pick up the guitar and I just, it's different writing with a guitar. I've played a pia my piano, uh, been playing the piano since I was about 14 and never really played the guitar. I was never really drawn to it. I thought, ah, that's like for boys, and ah, it's just, I don't like it. And two years ago when I went on my last tour, my guitar player, he is total 80s rock, even though he is born in the 90s. Um, <laughs> you look at him and he's like warped from 1983. Um, he's all about Motley Crue and Judas Priest and everything, and he started introducing me to rock and roll and then my basis as well. So now it's like, wait a minute, this, the sound of a guitar is really, I get it now. I totally get why people love guitars and rock and roll. And then I joined a tribute band for Kiss. For you joined a tribute band <laughs> for Kiss. Yeah, do you Do you put the face makeup <laughs> I, on and everything? Yeah, I, I recently I parted ways with the band because now I'm, I'm getting very busy with my own music. But I was with them for a year and we got the opportunity. My second show with them, we opened for Kiss. So Really? Yeah, <laughs> and I was really nervous because I never really knew their music. Well, I love Gene Simmons. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I just think he's so cool. And he is. They, they, we were backstage at the uh, Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Seminole, Florida, and they're taking us to do sound check, and then suddenly, like, these big trees just walk there, because I'm really short, I'm five foot two, and they're, like, really tall. I'm like, wait, oh, 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 and I'm trying to get my phone, and by the time I got my phone out, they were gone to their sound check, and I was like, meh, but they were really nice, and I said hi, you know, it's just, I was, in total shock. Never felt... Well, how exciting <laughs> to be included in, in their tour, though. Yeah, I just mean... Just to be well, in the, you know, to open. We, we didn't tour with them. We just happened to do that one show um, with them. But the tribute band, it's called... This, this band is called Mini Kiss. They've been around for about 15 years. And it's actually comprised of little people. But they couldn't find a vocalist. And I was looking for a job because I was really strapped for cash at the time. So when I joined them, I was like, okay, this could be fun. You know, I get to travel, you know, they pay for everything and then, and then I get paid. And then you were paid. tall on top of the world <laughs> because you're five two and they're four yeah, two and it was great. Exactly, but within the year that I was with them, we opened for Kiss, we're in a movie now. Um, I got a little role in the next Paul Blart mall cop movie really? with Kevin James. Yeah, we just filmed it in Vegas. Uh, we toured Canada a few times. We've been around the country. So it was, I had an amazing experience with them because I did learn a lot from bigger productions. Because I've done, I've done tours a lot. But this was just a whole other animal. Like, we're performing songs from Kiss. Nice. We're doing the whole makeup. And these are real Kiss fans that come to this show. <laughs> so you get the real rock star feel. One of, one of the shows that I did, this girl was so drunk that... You know, people, they usually go like this, like, you know, you want to, like, give them a high right. five while you're on stage. So, you know, I, I do that. I walk over to her, and she pulled me. I, I almost fell off the stage. Oh, my I goodness. hurt myself so bad, and, and I was like, wow, that's, that was my rock star moment. It got um, the manager of the band, he got it on tape, so... I got my rock star moment. <laughs> it was worth it all. It was so worth it. Was it was yes. worth it all. <laughs> that's what that song is yeah, about. <laughs> okay. The memories, the memories of life. That's what, you know, if you 
50 years go by and you feel regrets, come on. It's worth it all. Just do something, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to have some more music from you, so we'll be back next song. Cierra los ojos, escúchame Cuando veas mi amor, abrázame Nacimos solos, pero solo no estás Eres perfecto, soy tuya Tanto te quiero para mí Arriesgo todo por ti El mar no me puede hundir Baby, with you song. It was not in English. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Melissa Otero, I thought you were Italian. And I get that. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, listen, Spanish, Italian, it's not really that far apart. Yeah, no, far as, we're know. neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how did you get into the whole Latin thing to say, well, I'm going to go from smooth music, and it's still smooth, but now I'm really gonna get into something because Latin music is a different animal, a different entity, huge in itself. Yeah. Completely different mm -hmm. crowd mm -hmm. to please. Oh yeah, and in a lot of uh, cases it's a little tougher because they appreciate all forms of art, but if you're not genuine, they don't. They don't they like the like imitation. Yeah, exactly. They don't you, like the You got to be real. They don't care if you can't sing a tune. If you are on that stage and you are genuine about what you're doing, they will appreciate you. And I started singing in English when I moved to Puerto Rico when I was almost five. So I grew up on the island and it became my second language, but I'm fluent in both. And sometimes I have a hard time thinking, uh, how do you say, or I'll think the same thing in Spanish. Oh, and it's Confucius, but. Um, so in Puerto Rico, I was singing in English all the time, and I, I've been booed off stage. People throw stuff at me and it, because they were saying I was turning my back on my culture. They're like, you know, you're in well, Puerto Rico now. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That's not nice. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'm a kid and I'm a teenager and going through all these things. And, and it, usually when there was a show, I was already singing in front of thousands of people because people 
that they love arts. So it's not like here where you try to do a little show and it's really hard to get people to come to shows because there's so many options, especially in New York City. Yes. You go to Puerto Rico and there's only so many things you can do. You can always go to the beach or to the river and then if you have a show in, in town, everybody's gonna show up. So I, the first time I tried with the band to do the whole Spanish thing, they, it was a cover band and they wanted me to learn a Shakira song within 24 hours, which oh, happens fun. to be one of the hardest songs that she has because it had so much lyric. There was nothing that repeated. It's one of those like Bohemian Rhapsody kind of thing that never repeats. And I get on stage, it was the first song, and I forgot it. And the audience, they're singing it. They're trying to tell me what the lyrics are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then they booed me off stage. Um, and I said, nope. I can't, mm, 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 I, I can't do Spanish. I wasn't ready for it. And because my first language was English, when I moved to Puerto Rico, I almost felt rebellious against it. I was like, mm, you know, I'm, I'm American from America and I speak English only, which was really childish and stupid of me to think that way. And it's beautiful I, and, to have a second language. Oh yeah, or a no, third, no. <laughs> or a four, I mean, mm -hmm. I wish I could, you know, was more fluent in other languages. It's yeah. I love hearing different languages like that. I totally appreciate it now and I'm really grateful that I grew up on the island. I wouldn't have had it any other way. So, after I moved from the island back here in 2001, I little by little started to realize, you know, I think I can do something in Spanish too. And I did write a few songs in Spanish and people really enjoyed it. So with this album, I only have a couple of songs in Spanish, but um, it's my way of saying I haven't forgotten my island. It is a part of who I am, so. Okay, well, I appreciated that. It was still beautiful <laughs> even though I didn't understand a word. <laughs> but we're back to English now, so enjoy this. I confuse myself 
And I don't care to deny I, I, I'm no angel I have to face it I put one all for you I put one out for me These angels and demons won't set me free These angels and demons won't set me free. Okay, that was angels and demons. So were you tormented or you needed to come to terms? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote that song because of a friend of mine. She was going through a tough time and I didn't know, there's a few songs like that in that album. I didn't know how to help her, how to comfort her. So the best way was I wrote that song. And, and now that song actually was used for an airline. Yes, it was on U.S. Airways. It's in the video game Rock Band, so you can still download it to play. Rock Band. <laughs> and it's featured on Dance Moms, which is on Lifetime. So the kids dance to it. They do. Which they do beautiful dancing, and I'm sure that, that the yeah. music in there was, you know, very a very good routine. Yeah, I never imagined that they could do a lyrical dance like that. It looked really beautiful. <laughs> Look how hot you are on this. <laughs> Thank you. I don't you. know if you can get that. That looks, you know, it's a great. So are you going to be touring now with this? I am going to be touring in part because of that, but really it's in support of the new single. It's called Rising. It's uh, produced and written by Nick Christian, and I'm featured on it. And the single comes out on July 29th on iTunes, and we're filming the music video, and it'll come out shortly after. <laughs> oh, I look forward to seeing that. Yeah. So we're not, we don't want to forget about your CD. Mm -hmm. And where can we find some more information on you? The best way is to go to my website, melissaotero.com. And if that's too difficult, melissamusic.com. <laughs> Melissa Music. Now, how could you forget that? Yeah, that's easier. <laughs> that's easy. That's you. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you again for joining us. Thank you.